All right, well, let's uh, right, shut, okay. shut the master alarm off here. All right, so the latest patch has dropped. I believe this is 1.10 something, something, something. I can't keep track of how they're naming everything. And I wanted to focus on two things. So previously, one of the commenters had asked to see kind of how I use my controller. And I'm happy to show this. It's just not the easiest type of setup so that you can actually see the way it works because um, let me pull the controller off my webcam view here. You can see my desk, base of my keyboard. Basically, right here, you're seeing the edge of my desk. Normally, my keyboard's up around here somewhere. Uh, the camera's pretty much right next to my mouse pad, so it's kind of blocked off. I have a little towel here for an armrest. And if I'm playing the game, then the controller's typically under the desk. If I'm leaned back or relaxed properly, then I'm holding my controller oops, under my desk, kind of like this relaxed, ready to play, and then on my other hand can come up here and hit any of the specific keys on the keyboard that I need. In order to show all of this, I've had to move a few things around to make space to put the controller on the desk, as well as a light that will put enough light out for the camera to accurately see it and try to focus on it at this distance because it keeps trying to focus on everything in the room. So hopefully I can get everything I want showed, uh, shown here. Number two, I've had to move my, my microphone off to the side a little bit, so if I sound a little funky, that's probably why I'm not talking directly into the microphone as I normally would be. But, like I said, there's a new patch that released, and I wanted to cover a few aspects from that patch because they finally, finally figured out how to do sensitivity, at least from the curve. So I wanted to jump in before I show the curve, and let's see if it actually works. And then we'll go back in and take a look at how I use my dead zones. You can see this play right here. That's my dead zone horizontally. It's not as bad vertically, but left and right, you can see I've got a fair amount of play in it. This is my view one. It's got a fair amount of play horizontally. It's almost worse in the vertical front, but you can see how much play is in those little buttons that just doesn't respond properly. So. With that said, I've just taken the parking brake off. Let's go ahead and throttle this guy up to maximum. Well, let's uh, actually might help if I uh, selected the game first. Of course. Doesn't seem. Oh. Well, might help if I'd noticed my controller fell asleep that would probably be an important fact to have noticed before I embarrassed myself. All right, so let's take off the parking brake now. Unfortunately, one little spoiler I'll give you right now, they still have not fixed the rudder controls, so the rudder still doesn't work. It's uh, all or nothing, as you can see, which is very screwy. So, yeah, not a fan of the rudder still. Got the purple livery out. Now this is going to be a little tricky once we get airborne here in a second. Can't really see my speed because I've got my webcam view up. I need to move that. Knowing my airspeed is just a little bit important. So first and foremost, we still have a little bit of wind struggle here. Let's get that up. Close the flaps. Let's throttle down a little bit. And now while we're slowly flying, let me move my webcam view. I need to see my airspeed. That is just a little bit important. So what we're going to do is initiate just a light little right flight. Head out over the harbor a little bit. Still feels a little bit twitchy, unfortunately. downward trim on this guy. Let's see if I can keep myself from climbing too fast. By the same token, I don't want to nosedive. So let's bring the throttle back a little bit. But you can see the plane is flying pretty stable right now. I've not got autopilot on. No autopilot, so I'm just basically tapping the dead zones really to trigger just a little bit of motion left or right. 
which is a little bit twitchy, but if I start to engage, you can see I can just lightly hold a little bit on the button. Let me see if I can do this from the side. So you can see just how little I'm doing this. Just a tiny bit of motion and you can hold it and you'll get a smooth linear transition from left to right. So let me bank hard right, slam it left. You can see that's a much more appreciable motion because I, instead of holding a little bit, that continues to accelerate me in the uh, roll at a, at a understood rate. The other one had this funky curve that started, let me move this, so it was a little curve like this. It started slow and as you moved it, it got faster and faster. That's not how the ailerons work, unfortunately, so I don't really know why they chose to do that in the game and make them do this screwy little, we're gonna go super fast, we're gonna go super slow type of option. It just, that's not realistic at all. Fly in base here a little bit, and we're just going to turn right back into the pattern for the runway. And again, I'm trying to fly in a very funky, non normal manner here, so I apologize. You can see I'm doing a number of things that before the TBM was one of the more stable airplanes, so we are going to go look at the curve and then come back in and look at one of the planes that has always plagued me, which is the longitude. The CJ4 wasn't too bad, but I want to go straight to the, the bad boy here, once we look at these curves, and see kind of what it did. Now, I'm totally freehanding this flight. This is the first, outside of the Cub, um, full freeform flight that I have done in this version of Flight Simulator, because this control curve actually gives me enough confidence in what's happening to feather the controls enough to maintain, for the most part, a decent enough control of my aircraft to be able to say, hey, <laughs> I can kind of predict what's going to happen, and I can sort of make what I need to happen happen. Now, rudder controls aren't mandatory to make this happen, but if you know what they do and how to use them, then it certainly can play a nice part in helping you actually fly the plane. So you can see I just got pretty well lined up on my own. I know I'm coming in way low. That's partly due to the trims that were low, and I'm trying to keep a close eye on my airspeed. Typically, I come in and I sort of drop down a little hard, and most of my flights previously have been focused on specific aspects of autopilot, and normally you would cut autopilot off about around where I am now or a little closer and you would fly manually the final distance in whereas I have not really done any of that simply because I don't trust <laughs> autopilot and it just doesn't work so that was me looking at my airspeed and not counter turning which is also why you need to try and do these things from inside the cockpit the main reason I haven't flown a lot inside the cockpit is simply because I need to keep an eye on my plane that's going crazy. So this is just me flying way too fast, carrying too much airspeed. That was a bit of a harsh landing, but... Okay, let's get this thing out of thrust reverse. And parked. Okay, so... Oops. Hello, plane. So again, overall, for the first proper flight ever done by complete hand, that was pretty good. The sensitivity was not out of line. It, it still felt a little on the steeper part, but it was not bad. So let's go back to the main menu. My landing overall was one of my better ones in that I stayed pretty well aligned to the runway the whole way. The one time I was close to the ground and needed to glance at my uh, throttle or my airspeed because I knew I was going too fast but I didn't want to just cut my throttle and fall to the ground, I ended up banking a bit to the left because I was holding the controller in a funky way. You might not... let me just turn the webcam real quick so you can see. So I've got light pole, microphone stand, and I'm trying to reach around those things to grab the uh, controller and fly so it's kind of a little funky with my arms pretzeled through everything so let's go under controls 
let's go under controller down to all collapse them let's look at flight control surfaces primary once again you still don't and once again the rudder axis never wants to remember that I've set it thousands of times for left trigger because that's the one I just prefer to have set just never wants to remember those settings, but whatever. All right, sensitivity. So this is the new look and layout, and this will explain partly why I was a little bit jittery. So this got reset yet again. Um, basically now this is a proper sensitivity curve. If you remember what I was talking about in the last video, I mentioned that the curve, imagine my hand here is a curve, where it starts low at zero and then curves up is not how an aileron works. No matter what position that control surface is in, be it level, hard, or down, uh, if it's in the down position, it's going to be deflecting that air and causing the plane to roll. If it's up, it's going to be doing the same thing and causing the plane to roll the opposite direction. No matter what level of degree that aileron is in, it's going to be deflecting air and the wing is going to be moving. So to have a curve that applies more aileron, the farther you push it is, is just completely not how flight works. So in what they've done here is they've taken, instead of a just X, Y chart, they created this full um, negative and positive view of everything so that now you can properly see things. So let me get all my buttons on there and you can see kind of how screwed up everything is. But if you look now, you start at dead stick in the center. And then if I go to the left, it comes down if I go to the right, it goes positive, meaning that I'm applying the same rate no matter what across each side. Now, if I have, say, the left side that's not very well calibrated and maybe a little more sensitive than the other, then I can dip that sensitivity down a little bit. And you'll see now it, it moves a little slower and then it will accelerate. So it gives you a little bit more freedom to go in here now and actually calibrate the specific axis that you may need it to calibrate. For me, I really haven't noticed a problem with either left or right on any of my sticks, or even forward and backward. What I have are dead zones, and you can see here even more of a representation of what this dead zone means. So my stick, if I can get this stupid thing to focus, come on camera. Hello, focus on the controller. Thank you. I'll do the best I can. There we go. So you can see this motion is my dead zone. And if I move it over and release, I've still held it there. So that is still registered as a dead zone. So that is the area of space that I need to cover. So previously we were calling this about a 24% dead zone. And if you look, that's pretty accurate. I think it might be closer to a 22. Basically, I want it to match where the spring load pulls it back down to. So I might be able to get away with a little bit less but I don't want to have any of the dead zone actually controlling the plane. So I'm just going to push a little bit into the resistance. You see it pulls inside on the left side. I can go to there and it pulls it right back in. This way, no matter how I am, the dead zone won't be controlling my plane. I can get into the edge and begin to push it. Oops, of course I would mess with that. But once you get onto that edge and you begin to push it, the dead zone will end and the wing will respond. And this way, part of why it was so twitchy there was because I was making these minor little movements on the stick here that you can see, and those were causing the control surfaces to move. Well, that's my dead zone. And that I don't want controlling the plane at all because that means if it's just a hair off, the control surface will be moving and it will be deflecting some air. That is not healthy or good. So let's repeat that across the board. I think this one was, what, an 18? If I recall all of my previous settings, I'm going to pull it back. Yep, we're right on the edge of the spring. I can feel the tension. Nope, I think I need to go to a 20 on you. Which is a shame that I'm wasting so much of my controllability air, controllable area. Yep, that's about right. But that's just the only way to make it work. So up is really good. It comes back to there, so that's nice. Pulling back... I definitely have more wiggle room. Now on the right stick, I don't care as much simply because it's just my camera. And it really doesn't matter if I have a bit of extra dead zone on the camera. Now granted, I don't really want the camera to be floating around on its own. 
if I'm outside the plane, but it's easier for me just to make a minor correction and move it closer to the center, so that's not the end of the world. All right, so let's apply those settings. Let's go back into the game. And again, I'm just gonna go to the exact same runway. We're basically gonna complete the exact same flight. Instead of the TBM, however, I want to do the longitude. I have seen that they have done a couple of fixes to the autopilot, but I'm not here to mess with the autopilot. I'm here just to talk about the sensitivity and see if we can get these planes to actually control properly. The TBM does a similar thing to what the longitude does, whereas on top of the wing, so you have your aileron here, and then on top of the wing, there's another one. I don't know if I can easily do this. So this is the top of the wing, this is the aileron. So you have your aileron moving, and on top of the wing, closer to the front, you have a slat that will come up to help deflect that surface down. So if you're pulling wing, it, it's really gonna help deflect and make the plane a lot more maneuverable or react a lot faster. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, it just means that in these situations, the plane is extremely maneuverable and can be somewhat twitchy, but the TBM does the same thing, just doesn't have quite as many slats, and it does not have the same insane responsiveness that the Longitude did. Even when I had the dead zones removed, the plane just twitched all over the place and was virtually completely uncontrollable as I've complained hundreds and hundreds of times. So let's get this thing loaded in there and let's see how the TBM here. <laughs> let's see how the longitude handles now. All right, so we are in. Let's get on the runway here. All right, so let's get outside the plane and I'll show you kind of what I mean here. Let's zoom in. So I've got dead stick motion now. You can see roughly. Sorry, my webcam is having some focus issues with all the light bleeding it out. Well, I took all that to focus. Crazy webcam. All right, so you can see on the screen, I am moving my controller through the dead stick, and you see no movement on the ailerons. So now I'm going to just slowly push a bit to the left, and you can just barely see that minute deflection on the wing surface. And as I push more, up go the slats. And now I'm a full deflection. Same on the right, elevators, everything moves very well. But if you notice now, it's not twitching. You remember the previous video I did this, the ailerons were very twitchy. They were all over the place, whereas now it's very smooth. So if I want to move just a little bit of a turn, I just hold a tiny bit of deflection. The plane should roll very smoothly and slowly and predictably. When I'm done, I let go and I go back to my dead center, and if I want to compensate, I just ease a little bit on the left and off I go. Same with playing on my elevators. A little bit here, a little bit there, and off you go. So, let's, I know it's not ideal, again, to be flying outside the plane, but right now it's the easiest way to actually show what's going on. Let's take the parking brake off. Let's see if we can get this thing airborne. Uh, there's the wind. Now again, you can see I'm kind of loose holding this on the right hand because it's a difficult angle for me to be at here. The plane's going to naturally start rolling. There it goes. We're going to be airborne any second. back just a little bit. There's a bit of roll. Flaps, gear. Ooh, this plane is still a little on the twitchy side. Let's throttle back. Let's pitch this nose way down. Okay, that was me hitting a uh, trim on my rudder. That's on me. Okay, trim, 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 trim. Come on, trim this. There we go. All right. So. I think we've got the trims pretty well set. Nope, I keep hitting my rudder trims. Let me try to fly on this side. Sorry. Okay, so this plane is still a little bit twitchy. Throttle down a bit more. Let's see if I can get my nose down. Man, I'm at minus 28 on the trims, and I'm just 
not bringing that nose down. Alright, so we are way high. Throttle is low. Alright, now we're in a nose dive. This plane is just ridiculous to get configured for stable flight, but the fact of the matter is you can see it is actually flying other than the wind impacting it. For the most part, stably on its own. Come on, trims, catch the plane. Keep me from going crazy. Let's throttle down even further. Alright, so... This is such an uncomfortable position to fly in. But I'm holding a turn steady. You can see how twitchy it is. Most of this is just me returning to dead stick, so... It might be nice to pull some of the sensitivity back a little bit further, but I'm not sure that's really going to fix my issue with the plane. It's going to take a bit more work, but the fact that I'm manually flying this thing through everything that's going on is definitely a positive. Before, doing this type of a flight handling would have been virtually impossible. I'm not sure my flaps ever went down or up, so I don't know if that's been causing some of my issues. Alright, I think I see the runway. Yes, I do. We are coming around to the runway. Get the first flaps on. I can't tell if they went down. So I hear the button as if they're starting to go down, but they don't actually go down. Alright, let's get this thing in line. I don't like the wind. We are going way too fast. Considering I'm only, was it 30% throttle? Let's see if I can get the gear down now. Okay, plane, why, is, why are none of the buttons doing what they're supposed to be doing? I've hit gear down a number of times. I've also tried to hit flaps down a number of times, so let's cut all throttle. There we go. Still can't get the flaps down. I'm still accelerating somehow, even though I have zero throttle, so I'm not sure there's... Maybe there's some other issues with this plane, and it still feels ridiculous ridiculously twitchy. Like, I, I do not feel like I am in any control of the plane. I'm still being battered around by the wind. Micro-maneuvering. I didn't even counter-steer on that. Yeah, this, this plane is still out of control. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with that. That's just really agitating, because there's no reason that plane should be so uncontrollable. I do have the wind set to do nothing. That is, oops, let's go back. I want to go under options. I want to go under controls. I want to look at my sensitivity. It's still set. So I'm not going to undo it. It seemed like it was doing a pretty decent job. I want to fly somewhere else on a simple flight. So let's go out of Japan. Let's go back to... US, let's come down here to the DFW area. Let's take off from Addison here. Alright, now one other call out I'd like to make before this thing loads and I go silent is that in this patch, it seems like the load times have gone out the window again overall, whereas the previous patch, things seem to actually be loading fairly quickly and now they seem to be super slow. But to take apart the, the longitude flight, it seemed a little better once I got airborne, where I could control it a little bit, but once I got closer to the ground, I seemed to be getting buffered by crazy winds, and I understand winds are a part of the game. That's where the rudder and some other aspects would help, but I'm trying to do is remove the wind from the situation so that I can see how the plane actually controls. My dead stick worked, but just a little bit of, of stick to the left, like you can see here, where I'm just barely holding it, and you can see the stick is coming back on its own. That's really all I was doing. I was pushing a little bit to the left to compensate for the wind. The wind gust would die down, and I would roll hard left, so I'd 
dead stick it and then the wind would blow me back the other way to the right and that's kind of what killed me there. I managed to do decent on the elevation up and down or the pitch. Yaw wasn't that big of a deal. Roll is just still what's crazy in that plane so I don't know if I need to actually go in and on top of everything else I've done start to lower the sensitivity again. It might still be just an issue with that flight but at least at least what they've done in the way they've changed it from one simple linear curve to the dual axis visibility option is a step in the right direction. Sensitivity should never change from that and I, I'm not sure if being able to increase or decrease sensitivity for a calibration issue or a problem in the stick is really going to be all that necessary because you could typically make some changes within Windows or within the controller's software versus just simply lowering that entire linear line down farther to make it less responsive or raise it up to make it more responsive to where you'll hit the cap faster or it'll take you longer to hit the cap. That I don't know. All right, so I'm gonna take the parking brake off. Let's go outside. It doesn't seem like my flaps button wants to lower the flaps. Hello, why don't flaps want to go down? That's really bizarre. What the heck? So I have to hold the button down for my flaps now? What else did they break in this patch? That explains why there was so much of an issue there. How do I get flaps to the next one? Wow. Okay. Um, that's not how flaps work. Oh, man, I'm just discovering more and more problems with this game. Interesting, so that's a nice new break. You have to hold the button down for the flaps. See? So on the left you can see me pushing the button. I have to hold it down for the flaps to go to the first position. There's one more position in this plane which is 30 degrees. I can't get it. It used to just be a toggle, like a click, and it would go. So now I have no flaps. My goodness. Game is broken. All right, well, we're here to test the flying anyway, so... What I can say is they have definitely made the Addison area look a lot more realistic because this... I live pretty close to here. There's a neat tunnel that goes under the airport, and this is much more like what Addison looks like in real life. Okay, we're going to let lift do its own thing naturally here because I don't have any other way to do it. Then we're going to immediately, whoa, throttle down. Okay, what the heck is going on? Why? Uh, look at this. I'm not even... Go up. Okay, landing gear won't go up now. Uh, and the plane is just rocking completely on its own. Uh, where's pause? Weather. Wind. Can I delete wind, please? Am I still going to get buffeted around here? Okay, my gear's up at least now. So there's Love Field off to the side. There's Addison. Those buildings are a little bit too tall. Okay, Highway 75 to my left. I already flew past 635, yep. Alright, let's begin a bit of a turn here. Actually, we're going to want to turn this way. So 
So it seems like deleting the wind layer sort of worked this time. Because now I'm able to hold the plane in a proper turn. Things aren't going completely out of line. We're going to come over White Rock Lake here. And then we'll turn around and head back towards the airport. And try to land at Love Field. So it's still a little bit twitchy. But it is a lot better. Fly over the Arboretum, then make our turn. Alright, beginning turn. Try to turn this so you can see what I'm doing, but either I'm too too close to the mic or I'm too far. I had a bit of delay in responding to how hard I was turning. Okay, I can see downtown coming up. You should be seeing the airport. I'm going to throttle down to 22%. And... Okay, there's one of the runways. Let's follow 30, I-30 in. To town here. We should be getting a little lower. I'm going to throttle down to 16% now. See if I, okay, good. Landing gear will come down now. So they definitely messed a lot of settings up because I didn't used to have that problem with my landing gear. Alright, let's get this thing lined up. You can see my nav map on the right monitor is having an absolute mental breakdown with some of the waypoints. Alright, now I don't want to be pulling. Nope, I hate that about the trim. I almost, I don't know why I would trim the rudders. I don't think I've ever used that setting, so I may go disable that so that I don't keep accidentally hitting it. Okay, it doesn't feel like the wind is gone, because it still feels like I'm getting buffeted by something that shouldn't be there anymore. Okay, now I don't have flaps properly, so I'm going to try to hold the flaps on manually here, which is just absolutely stupid. And because of that, now I'm doing all these extra maneuvers to bring the plane into alignment at the last minute. It definitely reworked the textures a bit. Yeah, I don't know why the plane is fighting me. Seriously, why, why are you doing all these pitches and rolls? I am not telling you to do these things, and I deleted the wind layer. But that... No, 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 get back down. Get back down. can't do another control, so I have to turn the flaps off. Okay. <sighs> that was a struggle. Okay. So what the heck happened there? One, I love the texture redos and the fact that the buildings and things actually match reality a lot better. Dallas looks totally different now than it did the first few times I flew here, and it looks a hell of a lot more realistic. Number two, I don't know if you could catch it in watching what I was doing, but you could see that I was pulling like half stick and the plane wasn't responding and then all of a sudden the plane would jerk off as if as if the wind moving over the wings was non-existent for a time frame and then all of a sudden out of the blue, be quiet lady, all of a sudden out of the blue the plane would snap in that direction and then I'd try to compensate. The wind was just like completely maneuvering my airplane to a ridiculous degree. Now I know these are small aircraft and they are going to get buffeted by the wind. And I have never seen planes handle like that on takeoff. It's just absurd the way some of the, these things are applying in the game. At least, 
I can say once I deleted the wind layer, the plane seemed to respond a little better, but there were still negative zones where like the game was expecting the wind gust to be hitting the plane, which is why it was not responding, and then all of a sudden the plane would pitch the other way or roll the other way and suddenly lose a bit of control. And then at the end, in order to slow down and actually have some lift over the wings as I started to come in, I had to A, turn all throttle to zero, idle my engines, which is not quite realistic. You wouldn't come in under full power, but you wouldn't come in under, under idle either. I had to manually hold the flap control down in order to have any sort of flaps. Normally at landing, I would be at full flaps. I can't get to full flaps, so that meant I came in a lot faster and burned through a lot more of the runway before I touched down. And until I got close enough to the ground, which is the same thing that happened in the longitude, I really couldn't stabilize what the plane was doing, so it was all over the place until I got close enough to the ground, and then you could see I actually made a decent landing in the plane because I was able to gain enough control where it started responding to what I anticipated, so very disappointed still. I love what they've done to the sensitivity meter. It's a step in the right direction. I don't think it's 100% where it needs to be yet, but it is a step in the right direction to where we can actually properly utilize the two axes. I may go in and play with doing some negative adjustments on the jets, but again, I don't think that's the problem. I think the problem is the game just doesn't recognize the inputs correctly, especially off the controller. I've seen a lot of people who have flight yokes or decent joysticks that don't have the same degree of problems. They still do have some issues, but it's not to the same degree of just insanity. So I don't know if that's just a coding issue. I don't know if it's how the game is applying certain effects to what's going on. But it really kills the fun when you have to spend more time fighting with the game than just being a pilot. I, I'm not a, a professional by any means. I'm not even an amateur by any means. But I would consider myself an enthusiast. And I know enough about aviation. I do have experiences out there that I know I'm not completely out of line when I know these planes don't respond quite the way they are in the game. So it's a step in the right direction. Kudos to you for that, Microsoft. Boo on you for releasing a game that is still, what, two and a half, three months down the road, completely broken, in my opinion. I, I would much rather have completely borked textures like on launch day and a plane that flies than gorgeous looking Japan, much better ta uh, Dallas details, and a plane that I can't fly. The prop planes are still better than the jets, but it's not where it needs to be yet. And that's really disappointing this long in. So hopefully they get on the ball quickly. And uh, I'll run some other tests and try to see what else can be done or what what may have happened. Because it does look like the wind deleted, which is good. And I don't like not flying with wind. Maybe I'll be able to actually turn the gusts down to something a little more realistic for the area. But uh, we'll see. We'll see. I just find myself very disappointed in what, what our experience is, especially as the casual gamer, because that's what most of the audience is. Anyway, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.